one, two, three, four. I'm in the right place at the right time and I'm just where I'm supposed to be I'm in the right place at the right time I am just where I'm supposed to be you can do that I'm in the right place at the right time I am just where I'm supposed to be I'm in the right place at the right time and I'm just supposed to be oh my soul is a welcome here oh my soul is a welcome here I am getting a message loud and clear my soul is a welcome here just like before I'm in the right place at the right time and I'm just what I'm supposed to be I'm in the right place At the right time I am just what I'm supposed to be Oh, my soul is a welcome here Oh, my soul is a welcome here And I'm getting the message loud and clear My soul is a welcome here Oh, delighted that you have joined us in person or via Facebook Live or Zoom. For those of you who are here in person, please be sure to silence your cell phones. Thank you. And so now join me in prayer. I know that there is only one, one power, one life. It is infinite, it is everywhere, it is energy, it is the presence of love and intelligence that is in and through all things, all beings. I know that I am a soul. I am a soul which is made of that divine energy. I have a soul carbon-based vehicle that I move in, and as that is true for me, it's true for each and every one of us. We are each part and parcel of that infinite divine love and intelligence which shows up in our life as beauty and harmony, peace. And I know that the intelligence shows up for us all the time as intuition and wisdom. And we partake of that. We are open to that. And today's church service is an expression of the divine life. It is here in us, through us, as us, and we are always here to be open to receive that blessed message that is available. We are open to receive the enlightenment, the upliftment, the joy from our musicians and our soloists. We are absolutely open to the grace that we receive from everyone who makes this church service time possible. There's a lot of work that goes into it and how grateful I am for all of that. I know it is done, it is smooth, it is absolutely perfect for each of us. I am especially grateful for Dr. Mark, who is here today as a clear vessel for spirit to speak through the perfect word that each of us gets to hear exactly what we need to hear. He speaks with grace and eloquence the perfect message, and I am truly grateful for all of it, for our church community, for this time 
for everything that went into making this time possible, and God, 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 thank you. With gratitude, I release this word to the law of mind. I know it's done, and I let it be so, and together we can say, Amen. Please rise and join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please remain standing and join us in singing our congregational song. Which is, This Land is Your Land. sounds of her diamond desert while all around me a voice was sounding this land was made for you and me this land is your land this land is my land from california to the new york island from the redwood
So please be seated. We are going to meditate for the next five minutes. I invite you to close your eyes and silently repeat the mantra, God's the love that I am. God's the love that I am. And if your mind wanders, just bring it back to silently repeating, God's the love that I am. And I'll bring us out of the meditation in five minutes.
So many things we can control So many hurts that happen every day So many heartaches that pierce the soul So much pain that won't ever go away How do we make it better? How do we make it through? What can we do when there's nothing we can do? We can be kind. We can take care of each other. We can remember that deep down inside we all need the same things. And maybe we'll find if we are there for each other that together we'll weather whatever tomorrow may bring. Nobody really wants to fight. Nobody really wants to go to war. If everyone wants to make things right, what are we always fighting for? Does nobody want to see it? Does nobody understand? The power to heal is right here in our hand. We can be Deep down inside, we all need the same things. And maybe we'll find, if we are there for each other, that together we'll weather whatever tomorrow may bring. Walk the walk about it You and I Do or die We've got to try And get along We can be kind We can take care of each other We can remember that deep down inside We all need the same And maybe we'll find true peace of mind if we always remember we can be Great to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Ah. Okay, good morning. Thank you for being here. Um, well, here we are, 4th of July weekend. So, you know, um, so I've, got to I've got to talk about this, that the colonists, the original colonists, they had endless taxes and all these other burdens. Oh, my gosh, they had so much going on. Kind of like us, we feel like we have so much going on. You know, we are a land, a country, I think, that has the ability to uh, remedy any discordant situation, right? Because we have such extraordinary minds and resources and power and abilities. And so today I wanted to talk a little bit about what I believe is the destiny of the United States um, and what that means to us spiritually. I believe that the United States that we are here to be a nation that leads the way or 
is a significant part of showing the way to the rest of the world. Uh, what do I want to say? That we are, we are a nation that leads the way to enlightening the rest of the world. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I had that figured out in here, but it didn't come out this way. <laughs> um, we have to, and I think what's important for us right now is to, is to return to that purpose. So much of the world looks to the United States as the leader. We are the ultimate. We are the place to get to. We are the place to be. Everybody wants to be, uh, not everybody, but many, many want to be like us. So this, I believe, is the United States' destiny. Because inherent in our inception is this idea from the founders that every single person has value. Right? Now, this is, this is a tremendous thing. And you've heard me say here in church probably many times that the idea of a democracy like we have in the United States could not exist any place else because most other countries had kings. Right? And so this idea of an individual, every individual having value was an extraordinarily high-minded idea. You know, and so these individuals who um, were creating our country at the beginning, you know, whether it's through the Declaration of Independence or the Bill of Rights, the Constitution, and then we go on with the Emancipation Proclamation, the Gettysburg Address, our foundation is very, very high-minded. Right? I, believe, I believe truly, truly divinely inspired that God said to these people, hey, there's a better way to do this. There is a better way to do this. So I think our highest hopes you know, that, that, that we all have, um, our highest hopes are really spiritual truths that would set us all free. But here's the thing I come to realize is that everybody, and if this is so for me, and I believe it is, it's probably so for other people, and that means it's probably so going back in history, that we all know better than we are actually able to do, right? And so what this says to me right now today in 2022 is, gee, we've got to really try harder on, on a, in a personal way. You know, um, it was John F. Kennedy said something that I thought was really, really interesting. He said, we enjoy the comfort of opinion without the discomfort of thought. Hmm. You know, and so I, like I always say, everybody has an opinion. They're like cell phones. Everybody's got one. Yes, it's true. And Martin Luther King Jr. said, we need to have tough minds and tender hearts. So here, so, which, which sounds great, but boy, that's hard to do, isn't it? That's very, very hard. With One without the other is actually lacking. Now, science of mind says that God is a principle of love and wisdom that creates the universe out of itself, right? So love and wisdom, that's everywhere, but also within us. There is the love and the wisdom of God, of spirit, of the infinite within us right now. So something within us knows. Something within us always knows. And maybe, maybe that is our conscience, I don't know if you've watched this or not, but I watched this show. There were 10 episodes, and I loved it. Um, the First Lady. Hmm? And there was a scene where, um, in one of the later episodes, where um, there is a boat, a ship in the Atlantic, and it has about 100 refugees that have fled Nazi Germany. Uh, these, uh, they're all Jewish people on the boat, and nobody will give them asylum. So they are just out there on the boat out there on the ship, and it's really, really bad. And Eleanor Roosevelt takes a stand for giving these people a place to land. And, and, it, and she and the guy who creates the visas for them, he, he loses you know, his job and all this kind of stuff. But I, I thought about that so much, I thought, she had the conscience to do something. She just couldn't ignore it and go to a dinner party. You know, I mean, this was real. That she, she was so struck by people who are suffering, and that anything she could do to use her position, her power, her connection to the president, to alleviate the suffering of people was just, it was just extraordinary to me. So what I see is that this now, we are in a time where it's really, really time for a huge transformation. You know, the, the, because when we had the American Revolution, they were declaring that all men had rights given to them by God not a king. See, and this is different than any place else in the world. This is why the idea of democracy could only happen here. We had never had a king, right? Because remember, like we've joked about that, like it was great to be king, but it wasn't so good to be pretty much anybody else, right? And so what it did is this, this stretched the limits of human possibility, I believe. 
And, and, our, and like I say again, our founders were very, very high-minded, but it doesn't mean they were able to live it all 100%. Now, Science of Mind says that the power of love heals us. And that we all, so the other side of that coin is that hate destroys us, right? So we are interconnected. We all understand that here in the science of mind philosophy, that not only are we connected with other people in the room, other people in the city, we are actually connected, we believe, with all beings everywhere. And as we have talked about, out here, what's happening in the outer world changes only when we change what's going on in here, in our own consciousness, in our own body, in our own mind. So the power in the world, I believe, and I believe that this is what science of mind teaches us, should be used to heal, should be used to bring people together, to lift people up, to create opportunity. You know, now we've all heard that the universe is, is like a hologram, right? And so everybody understands what that is, that we have the whole within us is basically what that means. So I think we have more influence than we realize. Each and every one of us, we have much, much more influence and much more to do with the actual outcome than we are giving ourselves credit for. How can this be? Because all minds are joined. That's foundational to what we teach. All minds are joined. So our transformation influences the whole world. When we change our mind, when we do our own inner spiritual work, what do I mean by that? When we're forgiving, when we're compassionate, when we're kind, when we're loving, when we let stuff go, you know, the, the way out of outer darkness is not about battling or fighting the darkness. I believe that it makes more sense to cultivate more light within ourselves. And the more light we have within ourselves, the darkness does not stand a chance. You know, in a democracy like ours, we are free to do what we feel in our hearts we should do. And, and that coupled with our willingness to do, to actually do something, is, is, can be pretty extraordinary. But to worship or not to worship, and to whom we worshiped or not worshiped, was central, I think, to the founding fathers of American liberty. I mean, if we look at the early colonies, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania was a Quaker state, right? They were very peaceful people. Uh, Maryland was largely a Catholic state. Um, New England was very puritanical. Um, so different it's like, here was this land, and everybody who had a different religion seemed to want to come here and do something with that, right? And so this is, this is in our foundation, right? This is absolutely in our foundation and the founders' ideas of American liberty. So I think we, we've, we've sort of forgotten how things actually work, because if we look at what our founders created, the way it goes is power goes from the people to the government. The people empower the government. And that we're seeking a balance between individual rights and concern for the general welfare, which was brilliant on the part of our founders, because this had never been done anywhere. So do you get how, how, how an elevated an idea this is? People have the right to practice their religions, their social and uh, political beliefs without without any kind of tyranny. So clearly, um, our governmental principles are actually, at, at their face value level, they are more advanced than we are because we are still working on it. And what I have to say is, and I think people don't realize this, is that democracy um, is a work in progress, right? We live in a country like no place else in the world. And, you know, and I want you to say, first off, I've lived outside the country and I love America, I do. I know it's not perfect and I love it because I have lived outside and I know what it's like to live outside these borders. And I think living inside these borders has a lot of wonderful advantages. So, so clearly, on, on some principles, um, they're more advanced than we are. But you know, what people often want to do is they want to bring the principle down to their level and make it fit their circumstances. And, and, and people do the same thing with the Bible, and they do it with spiritual truth. They want to take the truth and pull it down to their level so it accommodates them and they don't have to change. When actually what we have to do is that we have to rise up we have to rise in consciousness, rise up in who we are, so that we become a place where those truths really are self-evident. You know, Thomas Jefferson, who I like very much, and he did some tremendous, tremendous things, but he also owned slaves. You know, and doesn't that seem like a contradiction, right? That he did not live up to these ideals. Then that doesn't make the ideals 
mean less, you know, because we, we're all aspiring, right? It means that Jefferson, like all of us, was a work in progress. So, so we're a democracy, thus we govern ourselves. And so there are these um, first principles that I'd like to just consider a little bit, um, that there is an equality of rights and opportunity, that all of us are equal before God and should be treated that way. Right? I mean, that's extraordinary to say that all men are equal before God and should be treated that way. Wow, that's so, that's so big. That's so big. That did not exist anywhere else in the world when our founding fathers came up with that, that all men are created equal, that we have inalienable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. So another one of these foundational um, ideas is e pluribus unum. It's on our coins. It's on our money, right? Which is basically that there is unity in diversity, that we are diverse yet dedicated to these principles that unite us. Uh, you know, all of us are many things at the same time, aren't we? You know, I'm, uh, I'm a son, and I'm a husband, and I'm a father of a dog, and I'm a religious scientist, and I'm a gay man, and I'm a white man, and, I, you know, all, all these things together. I am, we are all so many things at the same time. And so I think it's, it's, it's um, short-sighted to think that any one of those things might define a human being, you know, that we're, 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 we're all, all of it, right? Uh, and part of this, I think, part of the e pluribus unum is that I believe that America belongs to all of us, right? There is also a balance of um, individual liberty and the protection or the preservation of the common good. That the government is here to help protect the general welfare. And also this one I have to say, because this speaks to me so deeply, is religious freedom with no government interference. All right? This is a very, very enlightened concept. It's... it's um, It's not because of birth, but because we are Americans that we have the right to pursue happiness, right? It's the responsibility of our government to secure those rights. So yes, we believe it, but I think, are we vigilant on, its, uh, you know, on this belief? So as I came across this, Jefferson said this. This is really great. He said, we must endlessly struggle for and never be complacent until we have achieved equal opportunity uh, for modest prosperity and equal treatment before the law of every American citizen. It's like, wow, that's big. That's really big. See, that, that is uh, centered, central to the notion of liberty in America. You know, and so for us, that's about, you know, uh, uh, criminal justice and education and health care. So do we, do we, yes or no, remain committed to the principles of equality for all? And I think this is something that's worth looking at. You know, and yes, equality does not mean sameness. See, I think when people hear equality, they think, oh, we're all, that's, they're trying to make us all the same. And it's not. It's about, do you like, it, I'm sorry, it's not about, do you like someone or not? It's about people's rights before the law, right? So I believe that we are a nation of, of, of religious freedom. And no one is free, actually, unless we're all free. Mm -hmm. So the issues are not the issues. I think so often what we're told the issues are seem to be so much of a smokescreen. Is America to be ruled by, by all of us and for all of us? Or has the American government become a government of, by, and for a relative few, mm -hmm. as opposed to the many. Um, I think in our country, there's no reason why our children should not be having the best education in the world. There's re really, there's, there's, there's no reason why in our country, everybody should have access to healthy, healthy food. Right? There's no reason in our country why we shouldn't be uh, the greatest producers of clean energy and that there should be health care for all and on and on and on. Now, I know for everybody to have all of that, that's really, really big, right? But if anybody can do it, I have faith and confidence in us that we are the people that could pull that off. 
I mean, you know, we landed on the moon, right? So do we really not think we can come up with healthy food for children? I mean, the moon, for God's sakes. We are capable people. See, I think what happened is that we have failed to be vigilant on behalf of our own good. We've just taken it for granted. You know, and now we teach this. We say what you are grateful for increases, but what you take for granted diminishes. And I think this might be a little bit of what we're seeing right now. You know, if you think about it, when, when we're growing up, teenagers always rebel at some point about something. And I think that's, that's part of the process of individuating and becoming mature. You know, it's, it's just, it's part of the process. And so, I, so for me, I have to retain a level of optimism here. Uh, and, and, and part of how I'm able to do that, I figured out is if I stop focusing on my own concerns and I think about somebody else's, I become much more optimistic, which might sound crazy, but that's how it works in my mind. The, the founders pledged their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor. Do you know that when they signed the Declaration of Independence, that was treason against the king? And if they had lost, they would have been charged with treason. They would have been hung, drawn, and quartered, which is a really horrific, torturous death. Ugh, nobody, nobody should ever experience that. So they had tremendous personal courage. You know, um, to bring together spiritual goals and political goals, this um, kind of marriage is a uniquely American idea, right? So um, Henry David Thoreau, one of the American transcendentalists, um, said, following the dictates of one's consciousness, conscience, I'm sorry, following the dictates of one's conscience is more important than following the dictates of the government. Wow, okay, I could get into trouble with that, you know? Now, interestingly enough, as we look, as we, look we, can, we can see that, that Mahatma Gandhi was very influenced by Henry David Thoreau and Martin Luther King, Jr., was influenced by Gandhi. Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to say here is that love ultimately always triumphs. Um, if we as a country are spiritually empty, I think that forms a hole in the consciousness of the human race, right? That we're so consumed with um, consuming <laughs> that, that we're about to be consumed is how it feels to me some days. <laughs> so what matters most? Well, in different, we would all probably answer that a little differently depending upon what's happening in our life at any given moment. Well, well the most important thing is love. The most important thing is children. The most important thing is, is to make enough money. The most important thing is our health. The most important thing is to care for other people. Um, I think we, but again, I have to come back to this. We don't fight the dark. I think what we do is that we add more light and add more light, and add more light every way we possibly can. You know, when we love people, their wounds get healed. Uh, when we forgive people, wounds get healed. Um, when we um, are able to not be judgy on other people, I think that all kinds of stuff gets healed. You know, we all understand this. Violence leads to more violence, but love, the activity of love, calls up the presence of the divine within us. And that divine presence within us expressed out into the world really makes the world a much, much better place to be. Because I think that, um, that, that love that rises up within us gives us a divinely inspired power to, to move into the world in healthy ways. So again, I come back to this, that I believe our destiny as the United States of America is that we are to lead the way to enlighten the world. Not that we have all the answers, but we have some. We have figured out a few things, low over these many years. We have figured some stuff out. And I think it's ours to wave the banner and lead the charge that way. Every person, every person has value. Mm -hmm. Let's pray on that. So we turn our attention inward this morning for a moment, recognizing and embracing the spiritual truth that God, in its fullness, the love intelligence of the universe, is right where we are. And that, yes, we as a country, collectively, we have a divine destiny, and we are all a part of it. And so today we honor our founding fathers and mothers, those who laid the groundwork for the idea of the United States of America to become a reality. 
And I know that this democracy that we live in is a very, very high enlightened idea in the mind of God. And we are rising up to be the people who can actually fully express it and embody it. So we include in our prayer today all of these situations in the world that are pulling at our attention seemingly constantly lately. And we know that the God we believe in is big enough to be present in all of it. Present as love, as care, as healing, as peace, as needs met. God is present in all of it. And those who are called, I know, rise up to meet a new day, listening to the voice of conscience within them, doing what they know is right for them to do. So I know we are blessed to be together today. We are blessed to be in the United States of America, that our soul has chosen to incarnate here at this time for this purpose. And so I know we are blessed again and again and again, and we include all of the people that we love, family members and friends, parents and children, all of those we hold near and dear. And we know that they too are God's perfect expressions and that their needs are met, that they are loved, that all is well right where they are. We bless our church. We bless all churches, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God. And I know we are blessed by being together today that we are all part of a great divine idea that is unfolding in harmony and health and satisfaction for everyone, everyone. So again, remembering that we are all connected in the infinite mind, I say thank you, God, for each and every one of us here, for all that we are and for all that we are becoming. And so with a full heart, I just release this word, and so it is. Together we all say, Amen. All right, we'll sing one time. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful. I am so blessed. All right, I invite you to hold your gift over your heart and we'll say our statement of giving together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much.
Martin, the most awesome, fabulous. Woo! Oh, sorry about that. You can get Susan Edwards Martin's music on lots of places. She has a website, which is actually Unlimited Susan Edwards Martin. That's one word, Unlimited Susan Edwards Martin.com. But she's also available on Spotify, YouTube, iTunes, and all the streaming services. Go out and get her music. She is worth listening to. Yes. And today we have our band back, which is wonderful. <laughs> On piano, our multi talented Reverend Sydney. <laughs> I have drums, Sinclair Lott. Lute is our own Karen Smith, yay! And Charlie Steen on guitar, that's Reverend Sidney's husband. I also have on here bass, Randy Landis. Is that a bass that he's playing? That's a bass, okay, Randy Landis. Thank you, awesome music, thank you so much. If this is your first time at our church we are delighted that you are here. Please stop by the welcome table on the patio to pick up a packet of information just for you. We make it easy for you to make donations to our church. The text is to, to text to give number and the QR code are in your program or go to our website nhcrs.org slash give. Prayer with a Practitioner is available after service, both in person here in the sanctuary and on Zoom. If you are on Facebook, you can get onto Zoom and get Prayer with a Practitioner that way. This Wednesday evening is the Taze service with Practitioner Joanne O'Brien. The meditation starts at 6.50 p.m. and the service starts at 7 p.m. Join us. It's July 6 for this Taze service. The evening will begin with a sound meditation followed by practitioner Joanne O'Brien facilitating an hour of sacred chanting, readings, and meditation. There will be a potluck following, so bring your favorite dish to share. The Japan trip with Dr. Mark is October 2022. Join Dr. Mark for the spiritual adventure of a lifetime. For details and sign up, visit our website today or tomorrow, but today's better. Pray like you've never prayed before. Rock Your Word is Reverend Sidney's, our pianist today, Reverend Sidney's brand new six week how to pray class that started already on Tuesday, June 28th, but it's, there's still time for you to sign up for this transformational class where you'll learn affirmative powerful and effective prayer. Sign up on our website today. The cost is $175. The required text is available on our, on online, on our, in our bookstore or online. We are celebrating the holiday weekend with a free 
barbecue after the 11.30 service today. Yeah. Join us for delicious food, fellowship, and music by Mary Hyland and Gilbert Acuna. The men and women's groups will not meet today because they're going to be helping with the barbecue. Please note our used book sale has been postponed to next Sunday, July 10th. We have a Shea Ernest French dinner. Join Dr. Mark for a fabulous French dinner, decadent desserts, and wonderful enter entertainment. That will be Friday, July 15th at 7 p.m. on the church patio. Tickets are available on the patio and online for $40 each. And there will be a celebration of life service for our beloved practitioner, Gary Graham, on Saturday July 9th at 10 a.m. in person and on Zoom. All are welcome. He did a lot for our church. We have a Zoom virtual patio before and after Sunday and Wednesday services and a Zoom meditation every morning on Mondays, through Mondays through Saturdays, 7.55 to 8.15 a.m. Visit our website, nhcrs.org to obtain Zoom links and more information about all our events to sign up for our weekly e-blasts and monthly newsletters. And that's it. So please rise and join us in the peace song. So please repeat after me. I'm at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I am living love. Amen. Thank you. Woo!